Okay, welcome. I'd like to call the meeting of the Whaley School Committee to order on Monday, June 6th, uh, 2016. And we'll start with the minutes. I'd like to hold on the minutes until okay. September when Bob's here because we need to make it a correction. Okay. So if you don't mind, we'll nope. do that. And we'll move on to financial statements and warrants. Okay, so you have your reports with you, um, in front of you, and we have, um, I have encumbered, we did not get the invoices for the gas line repair, but we did get them, um, copies of them late today, and Mr. Lesko wasn't in, so I didn't want to pay them without his signature, but I encumbered that into our numbers. So we're looking right now, like after we balance all of our accounts, we will have some monies left over at the end of the year. Um, what I would recommend to the school committee is that first we will pay off the school lunch debt and, out, um, and the outstanding bills. Um, secondly, we have been on a freeze, and I know Mr. Christofuli um, would like to buy some supplies, uh, So, and especially custodial supplies. We want to order our summer waxes and everything now, so I think we should um, do that. Um, then also we have um, a couple of uh, repair and maintenance projects that we've been sitting on, um, four or five of them, uh, oh, four or five thousand dollars worth, uh, including doing another repair of partitions to the bathrooms. Uh, so that would be our priority to you guys as to how we would use the funds. Would that use up all the funds? Is yes. How much is it? One hundred thirteen thousand. No, 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 no. It'll be less than that. It, um, it'll probably. I'm looking. I think it's going to be between twenty and thirty thousand. So, um, and I think the lunch is going to take about ten of that. And then, um, again, <coughs> ordering all our, uh, pre, you know, getting our um, the supplies that we've been holding on and fixing. Oh, we can go ahead and fix your projectors and then getting the custodial supplies that we've sort of been holding off on, get those ordered, and then the repairs and maintenance projects. Um, I know we were looking at possibly doing, the, getting the new ceiling panels for the um, cafeteria. Or painting them, or, or painting whatever them needs out. to be done. Yeah, those are the two things that Andy and I discussed that we would like to finish. One is, the, there's one last bathroom. The boys' room down here has newer partitions. They weren't installed great. Andy wants to tighten that up. But the girls' room here still has the original partitions. If we get that bathroom done, that'll be uh, the last two bathrooms out of ten that have nice. been completely nice. updated. And uh, you know, you can just look around in here and see stains on some of the. But the cafeteria is far worse because of all the leaks. We really like to get that done this summer too. So, the, and then in mm -hmm. September we'll re give you a, a complete listing on, as to how we use those funds. Mm -hmm. So you're looking for priorities, and you're looking at. Um, covering the cafeteria overage and then the maintenance projects um, and, and get, get catching up on a couple of supply stuff that, that yeah. Pete's been okay. holding off on right. because of that getting our all our summer maintenance materials ordered now all right school committee are you all right with that I'm fine with that okay, okay, with mm -hmm. that. okay. Yep. and then the only other financial thing I have um, before because I think our lunch is on a different thing is I did bring for you a copy of the request for proposal that will be going out for the installation of the energy management system that we're using the green fund grants with uh, this is from Bob Lesko um, it looks like it says draft and it's a two-page word document yeah. so that is what with once you approve that we will be putting that out to uh, for bid Do you need us to approve this today? Um, it, it, Mr. Lesko is, was out today and tomorrow. Um, he had some scheduled time off. So if you want to take it and then um, just send us some questions, if you might have some questions as you go through it, and Bob's not here to answer it. So if you agree in in concept but want to work on some details, that that's fine. Don, do you have the history of this? No, um, I don't. Um, okay. Actually, I sort of heard through the grapevine that we had this grant, and then that's when I called mm -hmm. you and asked you about the grant and where we were with this. Um, I do remember reading about it in the paper, 
and um, it, there was some mention of a school, but I didn't have any idea how much funding was well, involved. Well, apparently they've put the, the um, funding of it off for a couple of years, so I'm assuming it took place prior, I don't know, if Pete, if you remember, it took place prior to my arrival, yeah, and yeah. it was something through the towns, and a portion of the grant could go to also cover the schools, but you had to have some specifics as to how it was going to be spent, and that you know took a while to get. Um, but there is a life expectancy as, as far as how far you can push this off. So this has to be done by the end of the, the end of this. Year. Yes, by January first. So that's why you want to make sure that. Uh, no, I think I mean I think it's terrific. It. We upgrade our HVAC. Yeah, no, I do um, too with modern technology mm -hmm. so you know that should be some cost savings there for us so and in theory I'm not opposed to this uh, you know I'll take a look at it and if I have some questions I'll give uh, Bob a call. Okay. All right, How much so money are we talking about? I think it's about a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a little, a little bit. I think it's a hundred and forty. Yeah. It's either a hundred and thirty or a hundred and forty thousand. Yeah. Does this connect to the school being designated as the emergency location? No. 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 This is separate? Totally it was separate. A, uh, the town I apparent apparently the town applied to be a a green, green community. town community. Yeah. yeah. I have to and say it's got four the grant. years ago. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I recall seeing that there were monies involved, but no one ever told me or, or, or I guess the superintendent that yeah. there was money in you know involved for the school. Okay. And I heard about it and then I started calling and I think it kind of fell through the cracks between the superintendent changing and the town administrator changing mm -hmm. here in Wheatley. And then I think when Mark was trying to clean things up before he left, he was like, we've got to get this going again. So, okay. so can I reflect in the minutes that you're supportive of it in concept? Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions, you'll get back to Bob. Yeah. They can okay. fix Wheatley spelled wrong. <laughs> fix what? Wheatley spelled wrong. Oh. Watley. Oh. Watley. <laughs> And you have to add it to the spell check. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, just uh, mm -hmm. kind of summarize. I'm I'm excited that this is getting done. Mm -hmm. So are we? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's terrific. All right. Public, public comment. No public game. comment. Okay. Unfinished business the non-union salary recommendations. Yes, I gave those to you last month. Um, and this actually came from a Frontier School Committee member, uh, this recommendation years ago, to um, give them to you a month in advance. Because in the past, they were always brought to you in June. And <coughs> we asked you to vote on them right away. So we give them to you a month in advance and then give you that time to um, look at it and if it, anyone had a question to get in touch with me and so here we are so we're asking for your approval of that okay um i brought it with me and mm -hmm. we do have uh one person on the lunch that we are we going to include or not include um at this point in time it's a personnel issue and i'm not really able to discuss it so, so. we shall vote that or not um I would rather vote it and then not use it than not have it. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Can I ask just a process question? Sure. Is that, um, how are these determined? It's 2%. Except so it's just a flat rate? It's for a flat everybody? 2%, except for Scott Paul, which I had brought right. to you before. Okay. And Janet's ready to go. And Janet's ready. Janet is in a different category because she was going to go to a different status once she completed some degree requirements, which she did. Okay. Okay. And her salary is totally out of the funds collected for the out of school time program. It's not in the budget. Okay. Um, so as part of next year's budget, we've already built in an increase yes. for this? Now that we've negotiated the, the salary. Yeah. So it's really just the exception that we're voting. Yes. Attention. Yeah, that was that was the only one. Mm -hmm. So Unless you make have any further that. discussion, would you, I would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, as printed. stories as printed on the handout last week. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, boy. 
This is going to be a long meeting, Marty. Well, <laughs> wait until you get to the next part. <laughs> okay, you mean we're going to talk about um, policies? Policies. <laughs> Did you give one to Bob Decker for me? I, I, I have an entire book for Bob. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so these are our last to <laughs> policy section. This is a momentous moment. <coughs> uh, redundant. But this is momentous because you were the first committee to vote on the last <laughs> two sections of the policy book. I brought a copy. I, in I case feel you would honored. Like to read them. <laughs> we can really drag this meeting out. I know. <laughs> I, you Marty, know would you start reading out. those? I will. This is your favorite section. <laughs> I, actually, my favorite section was J. And it's the biggest section, but it's the one that has to do with students. And I really did enjoy that. I know, I'm sort of eclipsed. Clearly you are. I did. I really did enjoy That's the good. policy. I did, Don. Good. I made a few find a second career. Having sat on a couple of those policy reviews, I, I just never found it you that can, enjoyable. You can ask my fellow committee members. They just were <laughs> in I'm, awe. I'm with you, Don. There's some things I love. And then there's some things that I just find torturous, and that's yep. why language things yep. are torturous. I, it was fascinating to me, because this really, I know nobody wants to hear it, but it, it really is sort of the Bible for how a school district should be run. It's really important to do, and it has the proper legal references. It's going to be online <coughs> in August. You will be able to do a search mm -hmm. by any word of interest. It's going to be... It'll be a nice legacy for me to leave to all of you. I will, I will say. Well, that, that okay. segues right into what I wanted to say, Mrs. Barry. Okay. Uh, on behalf of our committee, and I'm sure of all the committees, and the new superintendent, I would I thank you for taking this on because you could have easily said, I'll leave it for the next guy. Wow. And you didn't, and we appreciate the fact that well, you, you did it, and everything's in order, and. Mm -hmm. Typical Marty Barrett style, like everything's going to be in order when you leave. So I, I'm going to be watching in September if I'm hearing all sorts of complaints. <laughs> <laughs> I will never watch again. <laughs> Please do something better with your retirement yes, than watch really. us. I know, that's <laughs> well, you. <laughs> you won't get any complaints from here. Okay. okay. Well, thank you. But thank you very much. I did have fun doing it, and, and it was a great committee. So I ask for your approval of um, sections L and K. Okay, I make a motion to approve policy sections K and L. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The record show 2-0. There you go. <laughs> Waitley is the first. Right. Waitley has a full policy yeah. book. Yeah. Yay, Waitley. <laughs> we are the first and the best. All right, so we are going to talk about the cafeteria. Yes, yeah, so I put some reports in front of you. Um, I didn't mean to staple them, but they did get stapled. Um, but so the first one is our profit and loss for the year um, through May and we're looking at through May we have a $9,654.83 loss and we have about $1,000 outstanding balances. Now we usually do a very good job at the end of the school year cleaning up those balances um, so I'm not that concerned with those. Um, June we do sometimes make a profit in June because we're not buying anything we're just using up our inventory it's very creative lunch month <laughs> um, so we're just trying to use up our inventory so this isn't the end I, I do expect it to go down a little bit with the month of June um, but why are we losing money uh, that's that's the question and the next page is our um, our average daily participation. So if we compare it to last year, we can see, um, and this is only year to date through May, so if you look at the second page, we're down 343 meals from last year, yet we're up 2,121. But our participation is down about 8%. So when I look at, and the last page is all the schools, all four elementaries for Union 38. So when I look at our our participation, we're we're up there. We're like the the best school in participation, and I think it's just because if we look at our meal per service hour, because we have to have a minimum of two people in the cafeteria to serve and count lunches, 
it's the wages that throw us off. And that's about 57% of all of our costs is our, is our payroll. And there's nothing we can do about that because we do need the minimum of two people. Is there, isn't there a third person in there? There's a third person who oversees and does the monthly closings and does the financials. Mm -hmm. And she does the menu, the menu planning. But the two people, so if we were to look at the number, based on, there's a metric called meals per service hour, and ours should probably be about a four, and ours is probably about a seven. It's probably almost double what it should be based on the number of meals that we serve. But you can't have one person behind the counter. It just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of things I, I, you know, I mean, there's a couple of things as I alluded to earlier that, that Patty and I are going to be discussing later in the week um, around personnel and how you know we, we look at that. But because your school is so small, and because you still need the same number of people that Conway and Sunderland, well, Sunderland has. You know, Conway is losing <laughs> money as well, right. just not at such a pace as we are. But I think the committee needs to be thinking. Should you, in future budgeting, budget a portion or a salary in your budget mm -hmm. that at least you can plan on in the future, rather than at the end of every year? Now, we've been lucky this year and last year and the year before. We've had enough money in either end of the year or school choice uh, to put towards that. But there may come a time where you can't plan for that, and this would at least allow you to plan for it. And Don probably remembers years ago, we did have salaries or a portion of the salaries in the cafeteria in, in Actually, the Actually, we, we carried the full salary. Did salaries. you? Okay. Yeah. In different schools, they did different different amounts, and then, then they stopped doing that. Um, so it, it may be something for you all to think about <coughs> in the fall. I would ask that Patty remind us and keep it in your mind when we're starting on the budget mm -hmm. to put that in there mm -hmm. so we, we will have that discussion. I'll reflect right. that in the minutes yeah. as well. And I don't know if, um, I don't know if at maybe the October meeting, our joint meeting, if we want to make the cafeteria, the status of the district-wide cafeterias and uh, something that you all want to discuss together. Uh, is there something else you want to do, or do you want to just support them through the budget? Uh, and, but that would have to be, you know, all, all five together. So I don't know. And that's something we can talk about in September, and we can talk to the new superintendent if, if, there, if there's something we want to do district-wide and take a look at the program. Yeah, I, I'm in favor of that. But, so do we have a district-wide program? I guess I'm still no. confused about no. that one position. No. That, isn't there a shared position? There is a shared position. We have one person who um, is the head of the Frontier, and she also does all the supervisory work at Sunderland and Waitley. Okay. She so also, that's an added cost for us as a school. Yeah, correct. It's, right? It so, I mean, in the past, we didn't have that. Yes, we did, but it wasn't being done <clears throat> properly. Okay. Um, we don't have anybody in the position to take over that that role. But as as superintendent said, she and I are going to be reviewing all four schools and Frontier and talking about different different things. Um, and because everybody's pretty much in the same boat. It's not like mm -hmm. there's anybody. I mean, Deerfield is is kind of keeping their head above water. Um, but that but, but that that was a. I mean, they went, they yeah. did go with their new person there. They went from losing money to they're going to make a little money. They're at break even. They're going to make like a thousand dollars. What was the difference for them? They're a uh, larger school. They're a larger, they're a larger yeah. school, and we have a new food service director who's very experienced. We lucked out. He had retired from um, a school system right. in Connecticut, yeah. okay. moved, and then decided he wasn't ready to retire. So this is like his little hobby is, okay. is running the Deerfield School. So he made a lot of changes in the menus and how he purchases things, and I'm hoping that some of the other elementary schools can um, follow his lead and 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 replicate that. Sunderland with their breakfast program, they're probably gonna just break even as well. Mm -hmm. But you and Conway are losing money. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, you know, I think I've said it before, other school districts are facing the same yeah. thing. And I've seen 
so many combinations of different scenarios where you have an outside food company come in and that has good, bad, you know, ramifications. Sometimes they'll prepare things in a central location, truck it out, but there's mm -hmm. expenses involved. And I, would, having lived through that, I don't think the quality of the food is, is as good. Mm -hmm. um, I do think there are many things that we could do to improve upon our menu creation that we could do more from scratch cooking. Um, we have in the past, mm -hmm. so I'd like to see more of that. So I think there's there's areas to be worked on um, and areas to improve. I don't see it as throwing your hands up in the air saying there's no no way to solve this. I think there is. So this yeah. is for next year's budget, really, at this right. point. Right. In terms of well, changes. 18, because we did seven. So that's what I mean. Budget. The next budget process. Correct. So like Don said, when we get to that point, I have to remember, and Marty will put in the notes, and maybe it'll be something we talk about at the October joint meeting. But, you know, I just want to say it again that this is an inherent problem. That's, it is. It, it's, it's gone on for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, as long as I was a principal mm -hmm. and, you know, right up until now. I mean, it's, this is nothing new. And, well, it, you know, it's worsened with the new food. Yeah, with the regs. With yeah, the, the regs. With the new it food regs. It has, it. And it, you know, but we are buying a lot of local and, uh, you know, with those regs, there was like some sunshine because we have to have different colored vegetables during the week. So we're buying more fresh vegetables from our local farmers, which is, is which is great for the community, too. The, um, the other thing is that you don't get the kind of commodities that you got mm -mm. before. No. Either. So, no. you know, it's, uh, it's, you're really up against it. So, uh, you know, I'm glad we're going to have that discussion, but I really do think that we need to get something in the budget so we're not strapped at the end right, of the year. I'm right. glad that we have money right now to cover this and we're obligated to, we can't carry it over. Correct. Um, I agree with you, Don, and I, I, I think that one thing that it'll provide, uh, I mean, if we look at it the way we've been doing it, which is covering the overage every year, we are supporting it through the budget already. Mm -hmm. If we took a salary, let's say, of the full-time person in the kitchen, for example, and put that in the budget, at least we know now that's a standard. You know, now it's built mm -hmm. in. It's not going to necessarily change. And my guess is that our overage every year, I don't know all the numbers, Patty, but my guess is that if we moved one salary into the budget, that we would probably start hitting the black in the I rest of the program. Yeah. Yeah, and I then we won't have to worry about how much are we going to have to cover. Right because we've taken care of it and it's already in the budget and it's coming out of the budget as it is anyway. No, so. I think you're absolutely right. And, um, and I really would like to put a plug in just for, um, uh, I'm not opposed to uh, seeing something happen district-wide. I would, I would hate to see a, a real institutional approach to it. We mm -hmm. really have the benefit of having a nice local approach to it where we can buy local, we can mm -hmm. cook from scratch. Uh, offer a nice salad bar, and I think you'll lose a lot of that with the big industrial company hoping to ever go in that direction. I, I would not support that either, but I'm just saying it's an option yeah, out well, there. Yeah, it's certainly worth talking but about. Whaley should be very pleased with the uh, percentage of, of kids. Participants. Who, yeah, yes. participation rate is, is very high. So. Yeah, I mean, oh, you know, and by I mean, the way, are these, are these just um, students, or does it include staff participation? In any way? No, staff, so this is just what we have the metrics we go by for students. For students. Uh, we look at adult meals as just an added bonus. So if you look, um, adult meals are bringing in almost 4% of our revenue. Do you have any other questions on that? Nope. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, boy. We're into reports already, mm -hmm. Mrs. Barrett. Yes. And Mrs. Skrowski really doesn't have a report, but I did want to since this is Mrs. Barrett's last meeting in Waverly, <laughs> I did want to publicly thank her for all the work and effort she's put into this position and the work that she did before. Um, it's always been a pleasure working with Mrs. Barrett and uh, I've enjoyed it. We've had some good laughs and yeah. sometimes we didn't laugh, but <laughs> overall okay. it was, uh, quite an experience and I, <laughs> I do want to thank Mrs. Barrett uh, for doing an excellent job and I really mean that from the bottom of my heart as a committee member and a, as a person. Thank you, Did Don. a great job. Appreciate that. So. I think Don and I have been working together since 1988 in some <laughs> capacity. 
So we've gone through middle age and now we're into our golden years. Did it hit the uh, grandparent? Grandparent, and watched our kids grow up, and now, yep, who had the first grandchild? It hit the ball leak. Yeah, yeah. Both of us are getting shorter as we get older, but no, it, it has. It's been a pleasure um, to serve this committee and this community and then the community at large, so thank you. Thank you. And as a newcomer, I would like to add my thank you for all that you've done and my new appreciation of the superintendent role and how challenging that can be. It is a challenging job. It is one job. of those jobs. Yes. Um, and I reached out to the PTO and they would like to thank you also. And they oh, have a little gift yes. for you. I know you didn't want gifts, but I don't know if this oh. is the right time to make the presentation. No, this is fine. Like Just a great. little something oh. to remember. Wait, we recognize our PTO. And our PTO well, thanks you. Oh, so you we are. wanted to make sure that you sported Thank the you. Wavy colors and ah, you. Cool. <laughs> when you're out in your garden or <laughs> <laughs> when you're waving to us, you can wear your hat yeah. 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 cheering us on. Well, thank you very much. That's very sweet. Well, you're saying it's not my problem. <laughs> yeah. I know. Well, that's Good luck. Nice. I know. That's the problem because, you know, I still live in the district and Don still lives in the district, so. It's impossible not to stay connected. connected. I'll yeah. read this at some point. But thank you very much, Katie. Thank, thank you. you. Well, thank you, PTO. So, <laughs> no, it's been it's been an interesting ride, as they say. Well done, Mrs. Thank, thank you. you. Here, here. All right. <laughs> so, with that said, principal's report. Yep. So I put uh, paper in front of you. There's not much on it, but I just wanted to give you a quick update. I can find mine. I share with you what I read on it. So I just wanted to make sure that you all were aware, because I don't know that I've brought this up before, but because of the roof project at Deerfield this summer, we have some programs happening in Waitley this summer for the first time in my memory. I don't know if um, prior to that we had a lot of summer programming here, but this year we will. And um, it's going to be mostly uh, preschool programs from uh, Deerfield and some reading support and other things. Um, that are going to be located mostly in the early education way. And um, the custodial crew, number two, is, uh, is uh, ready to uh, address that uh, this summer. We haven't done it before, tried to work around programs in the building, but I have a lot of confidence in the crew, and I don't anticipate that it will be too problematic. We will get to the rooms that are used at the end of the summer. Most of them will be done by early August, and uh, I'm sure we can get caught up at that point. But I just wanted to make sure that you folks were aware of that. And uh, that's all I have for my report. If you have any questions, of course, I'm happy to try and answer them. I'd just like to say I appreciate Pete picking up the overflow because Deerfield does house in a tremendous amount of mm -hmm. summer programs. And so we had to farm them out. A lot of them are going to Sunderland. But it seemed to make sense to put a particular age group in one spot. So um, he was good enough to step up to the plate. It's centrally located with Sunderland and Whaley. And um, you know, I'm hoping that because we have such a long summer this summer, that even with the added burden in the building, that the custodians will still have time to, to prep for opening day. I think we'll be okay. We don't, you know, yeah. we don't foresee any unanticipated concerns, although that's why they're called unanticipated, because mm -hmm. they come up when you don't um, we didn't really think about them, but we did try to really give a lot of thought to both the grounds maintenance and the building, and we do have clear schedules about when people are coming and leaving. Um, I've already been in touch with several of the staff that are coming to the building. My intention is to be available to them when they first get here, and make sure they get uh, grounded and that they have what they need. Um, and Bob Les shows the where mm -hmm. he knows that when pro summer programs and kind of call it swooping in, getting custodial mm -hmm. crews to swoop into Sunderland and swoop into Waitley so that in Deerfield when the room starts. Yes, concentrated <laughs> effort to uh, get the buildings open. So is there any budgetary impact of moving the programs no. here? No. I think, no. Katie, the only thing I think we'll probably do is use more of our jug water this summer mm -hmm. because kids are going to want to drink water. Mm -hmm. And we do use coolers here primarily. So we'll probably you know, spend a little more on so, mm -hmm. that's about yeah, it shouldn't be And I had another question, which isn't really related about Whaley, but I heard that they were not going to have full day preschool anymore, or full day child care next year. Is that wrong? In, in Whaley? Or in general, in Deerfield? 
Is that not true? No. That's no. not true. That's not that we're aware. Okay. Whitley's had a half day. Whitley's program. never had it, but at Deerfield they've always had a full day we program. They have three full day programs. Yeah. They have three classrooms that are yeah. full day. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just heard someone explained that they were breaking it into like after school and then regular day. That might be the Friday program. Maybe the it's early release. release program. Okay. Oh, well, we might make some. That has nothing yeah. to do with preschool. No, it has nothing to do with preschool. Okay. Yeah. No. It's good to know because I didn't think it was a good idea. Mm. No, that doesn't. It's the first I've heard of that. Okay. No. Do you have a report? I don't. Sure? I just you wanted no to thank report. everyone for their support. And, I didn't and, think you would. I, <laughs> and it, yeah, that I didn't expect one, to no. be honest with you. So. So what happens over the summer? Is there, we don't have meetings? We don't meet in <coughs> July or August unless there's an emergency. But we're there if you need us, Katie. Yeah, I have to get reelected, so maybe I don't know. Oh, you, have, oh, <laughs> yeah, you guys haven't you? had your reelection yet? Yeah. When it's is in, that? I think it's this week. But I don't think there's anyone is it running tomorrow? It, it might be tomorrow. But there's no I one running. Right. I think it's tomorrow. And then I, oh, there's nobody who took papers out against you. Or, okay. Well, hopefully that'll work. Yeah, we always did our reorganization of Whateley and Frontier in September. Okay. Um, Deerfield, we do this week. Um, and I think Sunderland and Conway we do as well in June. But the other two do great. And there's nothing really that happens over the summer? Or? No, I mean, unless there was some catastrophe, and you know, which you never want to have happen. Um, so what we're doing in the summer is that we're closing out this year, getting mm -hmm. the new year open. Um, keep, we, have, we, you know, we keep paying people because people get paid all year long. Right. So we're very, you know, active down at the central office, and you will have to come in to sign some warrants. Okay. Um, so you'll contact us? Yes. I will. But uh, Donna, I think that happened. Donna that. will. Yeah. yeah. We have school community usually coming in all summer. And, and I um, know that Lynn Perry was getting in touch with people mm -hmm. or trying to, to book an appointment. Mm -hmm. um, she starts officially July 5th. Okay. So um, and she will hit the ground running. She and I are just so you're aware, um, we've met a couple of times. We're meeting again with our. Uh, school attorney on June 15th to kind of get her up to snuff a little bit on Massachusetts law okay. um, because it's very different than New Hampshire law. Mm -hmm. And um, she's also trying to close out her position. So, and the last time we talked, they had not hired a replacement yet, so maybe mm -hmm. they've done that as well. So, that's anyway. Hmm? Isn't that hard? Yes, yeah. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. Motion to uh, end the meeting. Adjourn, yes. <laughs> the meeting. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Marty, we're, we.